All right, guys, if you want to stay, uh, we've got Exhibits. That's also in a similar space of decentralized AI compute. Uh, and Juan Soli, they're one of our Stanford teams, and we're excited about how they're also kind of optimizing and accelerating uh, uh, compute in the space. All right, thank you, Gil. I know it's been a long day, uh, so I'll do my best to keep you entertained and grab your attention. So, um, as we all know, the demand for compute has just exploded in the past couple of years. Um, and with the complexity of AI models expected to double every three months, um, this exponential growth in demand is showing no signs of abatement. And I'm sure you've all seen in the news that Sam Altman is raising some five to seven trillion dollars to reshape the chip manufacturing industry um, to mitigate this shortage problem. And um, if you've been following markets, NVIDIA, of course, has been the most visible beneficiary of this new reality, and their market capitalization reached uh, over $2 trillion. Now, with all of that said, if we take a step back and consider all the different GPUs that are currently in possession, the story becomes a bit nuanced. So there are 2,200 independent data centers in the US, and the utilization rate of GPUs is actually less than 20%. And then there are 30 million GPUs um, in mining rigs with less than 40% utilization. And then when you get to the mass market with 200, 250 million chips, less than 12% are being used. And we note that among the underutilized GPUs, for every data center grade chip, there are 99 consumer grade chips. And then within that small slither, that slice of data, uh, data center grade chips, only 1% are of the highest quality commercial grade H100s. And many of you know that for AI training, that's driving much of this demand for compute has a strict preference for H100s. And there's a very good reason for this. Um, the consumer grade chips, they only offer weak computing power. They have slow communication and they're plagued with high failure rates. So they fail to pass the minimum requirements set by the enterprise users looking for practical applications speed, and high reliability. So at Exhibits, we're trying to tackle this problem and propose a solution. And we do this by first aggregating idle GPUs from multiple sources into a single platform. Second, by accelerating weak GPUs for AI workloads and hoping to convert consumer-grade chips into valuable assets in the compute ecosystem. And third, by stabilizing GPU clusters to provide constantly reliable service for enterprise level use cases and for millions of users. Now of the three missions, um, we've spent the bulk of our research and development investments and intellectual capital in developing the acceleration and stabilization. And this we're trying to build as our core value proposition and to really set ourselves apart from the competition. So our technology architecture consists of three major parts. The first is the automated LLM configuration that optimally matches GPUs to LLM inference services. And second part is GPU acceleration using adaptive sparsity predictor GPU-CPU hybrid execution, and impact-based neuron placement. And I'll go over this more in detail in the following slide. And the third part is elastic resource scheduling that aims to minimize uh, compute capacity slack in the system. So an important observation of large language models is that the 95% of trained neurons are often inactive for inference. So there's research currently underway where scientists are developing simplified models with a fraction of the parameters to approximate the capabilities of large language models. 
And for us, we use an offline split to initially separate and select the active neurons in a static environment. And we fine tune the subset using an online predictor based on user provided information. And so here we have a transformer model. And zooming in on the two fully connected layers, you can see the weight matrices with the highlighted rows and columns corresponding to the active neurons. And then after two linear transformations, neurons 9, 7, and 5 are stored in the GPU memory and the rest into CPU. So this hybridized execution allows us to dramatically reduce the compute load placed on GPUs. Then to illustrate how we manage compute resource, here we have a distribution of four user-prompted tasks over five different compute nodes in time. And here's the picture on the left is following parallel compute computation. So each row represents a compute node, and the columns are discrete time steps. Now, when these user tasks have low correlations in time, the general shape of this distribution tends to be quite stable. And that allows us to impose a prediction model with the aim of redistributing the compute kernels to minimize the area of bubbles. So bubble is this white zone where they represent unutilized compute capacity. Okay. So you see task one, it takes 19 time steps to complete under parallel computation. And that we, we reduce it down to 16 steps. So there are three modules that accelerate and stabilize our compute system. Uh, first is the, the configuration recommendation module that defines the policy function that maps each LLM inference service to a GPU. The second module is the performance detection module, and that ensures stability, a minimum service quality, and controls the scaling of up and down of resources assigned to a particular task in the system. And the third module is the deployment execution module. And that dynamically makes adjustments to the policy function in response to the changing conditions in the performance metrics so that the entire system is optimized in every step in time. And the common denominator across the three, three modules is that we're able to impose a prediction model that forecasts how the different variables in the system are distributed over time so that we can perform constrained optimizations continuously to maximize the efficiency of compute utilization. So what does all of this mean empirically in real life? You know, how, does they, how do they show up? So we took an NVIDIA RTX 4090 chip. Uh, so someone in the panel mentioned that just before me. And we compared it against an A100 um, in relative performance. So we measure performance along average tokens processed per second. And we see that a normal 4090 that's unaccelerated perform at 6%. So what does that mean in, in economic terms? It means that even with a fraction of the price of a $20,000 A100 chip, on a performance-adjusted basis, this chip is actually 67% more expensive. Now, why, why is that? Well, because you're paying $2,000 to get $1,200 worth of compute. Okay. Now, when we run it through our acceleration algorithm, we see a drastic jump in performance up to 72%, and that translates now to having the 4090 chips being 86% cheaper in, in today's prices. And so that effectively flips the value proposition. And now the consumer grade chips are economically viable. Now, so what does that mean in, in AI model testing? Well, now we can train models with, with twice as many parameters. And for inference, go up to 175 billion. Uh, which is notable because that's the number of parameters of a ChatGPT 3.0. And in terms of stability, uh, 
we, we achieve a very impressive 99.986% uptime, which is comparable or exceeds that of a tier three data center. Here's a short case study. Um, so Nebula Block is one of our current customers. And, and they're an AI and cloud computing systems integration company. And Nebula was spending close to $191,000 a month with AWS. And when they onboarded with us, we were able to cut down their cost by 70% while shortening their time or increasing their performance by 30%. So this picture in the bottom right you see is their monthly spend with us since they onboarded in October last year. And what you see immediately is this consistent increase in spending month after month, which we see as a validation of the high quality product and service that we deliver to all our, all our clients. Um, here is a snapshot of the console that's available to our users, so those who, are de who demand and need access to compute. Um, can we place the the play the clip? Following Gemini's um, demo, we decided to just record what you can see on a clip. But I promise um, it's, it's working and you can access it. And when you're on board with us, this is what you will see. I think that's it. So we have a screenshot of a client environment and operation we call Deep Scope Automated Management Platform. And our customers are able to perform automated LNM configuration and deployment. So the modules that I spoke of, um, they're able to access and control that. Network and infinity band management for communication and latency management, uh, performance observation and optimization, and the elastic computing and failure recovery. Uh, this is a, a picture of our community DevNet, which was launched earlier this year. So this would be the console and interface available on the supply side uh, for those of you, including uh, retail users with GPUs, that you'd like to contribute uh, toward our network. Um, and everyone here is welcome to join. Um, apply to be whitelisted, and you can become, become a part. And um, why don't we also just briefly play a clip of that? I think that's good. Yeah. Um, so right now, uh, we have over 65 chips in our network that includes H100s and consumer-grade chips like 4090. And um, 
and they're distributed all over North America and Europe. And it's typically quite difficult uh, for anyone to really secure supplies of this magnitude. Uh, but our executives are, have been part of uh, major uh, Bitcoin mining operations like Bitmain, and they have had uh, secured um, really valuable relationships over time. And with our expertise, uh, we've, we're fortunate to forge these strategic partnerships. Um, our team, our, uh, the CEO is Zach, uh, who, who has a PhD in computer science from Princeton, and he has over 10 years experience working in cloud computing and blockchain. And we were fortunate uh, to be incubated at Harvard and now part of Stanford, also Berkeley's acceleration program, and um, had a chance to work with these famed institutional brands. So please follow us um, along our journey and keep updated on our progress at exhibits.ai. Thank you. <laughs>